Hello everyone, uh, this is Rishi Raj. Last month I made a video on how to tackle the interview process of the Fulbright Nehru Doctoral Research Fellowship and some of you bestowed me with doubts regarding the fellowship in general, especially a lot of messages in LinkedIn. So here I am with a video that will very succinctly explain all the details about the Fulbright Fellowship. So uh, let's get started and try to understand what this Fulbright Fellowship is uh, all about. So uh, Fulbright Fellowship by definition is a cultural exchange program between the people of the United States and other countries. So every year people from other countries visit the United States and people of the United States visit other countries uh, to exchange culture and knowledge. This fellowship was started by a senator in the United States of America, J. William Fulbright, and it started in the year 1946. So it is one of, this is one of the oldest fellowship uh, of the world. Uh, when it comes to India, Fulbright Fellowship in India, so these are, the, these are some of the Fulbright Nehru Fellowships like the Master's Fellowship, the Doctoral Research Fellowship, the Academic and Professional Excellence Fellowship and so on. There is a newly constituted uh, Fulbright Kalam Climate Fellowship which is, uh, which is on doctoral, postdoctoral and professional excellence level. But this video will mainly be about the Doctoral Research Fellowship. That is because uh, I am on a Fulbright Nehru Doctoral Research Fellowship and I know more about this fellowship than anything else or in other way around I do not want to uh, show that I know about other fellowship rather than the one I am in. Okay, so uh, the United States India Education Foundation is the administrating body for the Fulbright Fellowship in India. So if you log into their website, you will have all the details necessary to understand what this fellowship is all about. Basically everything that you need to know about this fellowship from eligibility criteria to benefits will be on their website. But as I said in this video, I will succinctly uh, discuss all those details. Let's start with benefits and we'll gradually go to the application process and so on. So the doctoral research fellowship basically gives you all these benefits. So once you clear the application process or once you are selected for the fellowship, you will get a TOEFL fee support where you will be appearing for the TOEFL exam, uh, uh, which is sponsored by the USIEF. There is a J1 visa support. Basically, you don't have to do anything for the visa. The Fulbright administrating body will help you get a visa and they'll make, they'll make sure you get the visa. There is a round trip economy or premium economy flight tickets to the United States and back to India. There is a monthly stipend which depends on which location of United States you will be in. That's, that ranges currently from $1,500 to $2,500. There is also a settling in support for extra baggage or to carry some experimental items that you may want to carry from um, India to the United States. Uh, there is also an affiliation fee support, which means that uh, some of these U.S. institution requires some kind of fee uh, to host visitors. So if there is a fee, then uh, the USIEF, that is the administrating body of Fulbright, will actually be paying that fee for you. Uh, it also covers health insurance, which does not cover ear, nose and tongue, but that health insurance basically is enough for your stay in the United States. Um, some uh, other benefits include documentation support. So because you will, going, you will be going to uh, overseas countries, there will be a lot of documents involved, medical clearance and many other things. And in all these things, the uh, Fulbright uh, administrative body will completely support you. Uh, and it will make sure you suffer less and less pain in doing all these processes. The Fulbright Fellowship does not cover support for dependents. I, this might change in future, but currently it doesn't. And any emergency expenses are not provided. So basically, whatever stipend they are providing or whatever settling in support that they that that the fellowship provide is all it. And you have to you know plan your or plan or budget accordingly to factor in emergency expenses that might occur during your stay in the United States. That's all about the benefit. That's a lot of benefit to be honest. That's um yeah that's great. And there are there could be some future benefits as well. For example, you know, 40 full bed alumni have served as head of state or government, um, you know, and there are other details like 76 of them have achieved the MacArthur Foundation Fellowship. 
uh, 62 of them have been awarded the Nobel Prize. And recently, the, uh, depending on when you are watching this video, but the UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak is also a Fulbright Fellow, if that was indeed interesting for you. Uh, the duration of this fellowship is, is six to nine months. So basically, you get to stay a maximum of nine months in the United States and carry out research. Remember, again, I'm talking about the Fulbright Nehru Doctoral Research Fellowship, not any other fellowship. So that fellowship is for a stricted duration where you spend this much time in the United States to carry out a research work. What's the eligibility? Well, uh, when it comes to eligibility, mostly every branch is covered in Fulbright Fellowship. This includes branch from engineering. This includes branch, uh, branches like public policy, women and gender studies, also includes things like um, history and so on and so forth. The expected uh, PhD thesis submission date should be at least three months after the Fulbright Nehru grant end date. That is one of the eligibility criteria. So basically when you finish this fellowship and come back uh, to, the, to India, you should have at least three months of time left to submit your thesis so that uh, whatever you have learned in the United States or whatever research work that you have carried out in the United States can be incorporated into the thesis and then the thesis can be submitted. That's the eligibility in short. There is no age limit and all such things. And when it comes to the application process, um, the application should basically show that you have adequate, you have experience of adequate research in the relevant field that may be in terms of some publications or some written manuscript which is under review or something that you have submitted somewhere uh, or some research proposal or grant proposal for that matter. Uh, even if you have assisted your advisor in writing grants or writing papers, you can show that as an evidence that you have adequate research experience. Uh, there should be a research proposal for the work to be conducted in the United States that's basically saying why your research work uh, requires that you go to the United States and carry out the work there. So this is a very common question in a Fulbright interview as well, like why is it necessary for you to go to the United States uh, and do research and why you are the candidate who has to be awarded this fellowship. Beside that, there should also be a personal statement. Uh, there should be a letter of recommendation. One is required and that is usually from your advisor, but three is recommended. And there should also be a letter of invitation. Again, this is not required, but it is good to have one so that it shows that the, uh, the, the, the institute in the United States that you are willing to visit is uh, uh, is ready to you know host you and that what the that's what the letter of invitation is so, uh, shows when you apply for this fellowship you will have all these details uh, in the application form so what you should be ready with i would say is a letter of invitation because you need to contact your U us university uh, prior before the due date and ask them for a letter of invitation. This might be from your collaborator or someone, some professor in the United States that you uh, know. That's the application process in short. Um, today, I don't know, today is 25th November here, uh, 2022 that I'm making this video and uh, it's about, you know, more than six months left for the next due date of the fellowship uh, to come by so there's enough time that you plan accordingly and apply for the uh, doctoral research fellowship uh, the selection process is competitive there are about 500 applications submitted every year and around 30 to 50 are called for interview and about half of that are actually selected so yeah it is competitive but if you plan carefully uh, you know, I don't see any reason why someone shouldn't be awarded this fellowship. Uh, this is the timeline. Uh, so once the interviews are done with, once the interviews are over, you are supposed to give your TOEFL exam in December. Uh, the fundings get uh, the funding, which is from the United States, because you will be in the United States. So the United States government will be funding you at that time. So there's a confirmation about that, which comes in March. These are basically logistical stuff, which usually happens by itself. By June or July, the visa uh, process starts and you can finally depart to the United States in the month of August. But then you get to decide when you go to the United States. It could be August, it could be September, or it could be later, uh, six months later too. And accordingly, the visa dates are set. 
In my personal experience, the Fulbright administrative team that is the United States India Education Foundation is, is should be a point of contact. Any doubts should actually be directed to them because they are the most helpful people uh, who can help you get this fellowship. Uh, they are very helpful. They, uh, they will share all the details with you, including what kind of questions that would be asked in the interview. Personally, uh, for me, the interview, Fulbright interview was very, very enriching. It was the finest interview I've ever attended in my life till date. Uh, and then I joined the Carnegie Mellon University. I'm currently in the Carnegie Mellon University's Software and Societal Systems Department as a Fulbright Scholar. That's it. Uh, that's all the details about this uh, fellowship. All the best. If you have any doubts, you can obviously write to me. As I said, this video was meant to be succinct and all the details I have shared very succinctly um, as possible. Thank you. See you next time.